we're not walking in our divine authority. We're hmm. not walking in that divine image, that divine identity that God has given us and that positional place that we do have in Christ Jesus. We're walking or living, if you will, beneath the structure of the anointing instead of in those high places where the anointing lifts us high above principalities. We're not operating out of a seated realm. I'm not sure if we really even understand the true authority that we have as a believer. Uh oh. Hello and welcome to Life 3.0 on E4TC Radio. It's the Apostolic Prophetic Podcast Ministry of E4TC International, Ephesians 4 Training Center International, and I'm your host, Apostle J.E. Bowser. Life 3.0 focuses on the awareness, the development, and spiritual elevation of the believer through discovering who we are what we have, and how to use the provisions Christ has given us. It is our intention to confront and reverse the mindsets and challenges that come from not being in proper alignment and position while being in Christ Jesus. As you can imagine, this topic is immense, so I am so blessed to solicit some expert help. I was impressed in my spirit to call upon five radical voices in Christendom, voices who are not contained in the religious box, but through their relationship with Christ, have been anointed to be the voices of the emerging end-time assembly. These are those called to invade Babylon, to reveal the hidden things in Christ. Such a voice is my guest, Prophetess Christy Williams. Prophetess Williams is a native of Stamps, Arkansas, and currently residing in Texarkana. She is a powerful speaker, a profound visionary, and possesses a strong prophetic voice which supplements her calling to proclaim the message of the Lord globally. Prophetess Williams is a divinely chosen to function with a multi-level anointing in the calling of both the apostolic and prophetic offices. Through that anointing, she leads Christy Williams Ministries, which utilizes various supportive ministries such as Crowned Jewels, the She Movement, and A Prophet's Call. She also mentors a ladies' group entitled She Reigns, which consists of approximately 540 women across the globe. She also hosts a weekly broadcast called The Awakening Radio Show, which airs Sunday morning at 8.30 Central Time on KTOY 104.7 FM in Texarkana. She's written a book also entitled Free to Be Me, which deals with the identity of who we are in the spirit. This book was written in one day, imagine this now, as the spirit inspired her to transfer downloads onto paper. Her desire is to see the people of God set free, delivered, saved, be made whole, and to walk in the God-given authority that he has called us to walk in. Prophetess Williams is a mother of three and a successful businesswoman. You can reach her, and I'm sure you would want to, at Christy Williams Ministries at gmail.com. Again, that's Christy with an I and an E, Christy Williams Ministries, all one word, at gmail.com. The continuing topic for today is the authority of the believer. This will be part two. Prophetess Christy Williams, welcome again to Life 3.0. Thank you so very much, Apostle, for having me on again. It is my pleasure to be here. 
Thank you so much for coming back and being with us on today. As we discussed last time, um, we, we we realized that there had to be a part two. There, there was there was so much involved, and the spirit of God was moving in such a dynamic, impactful, and insightful way that that had to be a part two. And yes. and uh, I use as a platform Habakkuk three nineteen. If I may just take a moment to repeat that because it was very powerful, and you you was used by the Holy Spirit to elevate that to such a very high degree. A lot of people heard that broadcast, as you are aware, of. it got you busier than you were before. So this, this was very, uh, it was an anointing on the first broadcast. So ladies and gentlemen, sisters and brothers, if you did not hear the first one, it is archived, and please make sure you hear it. This is part two of the authority of believer. Habakkuk 3.19 says this, The Lord God, who is Jehovah Adonai, is my strength my source of courage, and my invincible army. He has made my feet steady and sure, like hind's feet, and makes me walk forward with spiritual confidence on my high places of challenge and responsibility. Now that's what it says, and Prophetess uh, Williams and I had discussed last week that God indeed wants us to walk on mountaintops, but we are not walking on the mountaintop. Now, this came to me, Prophetess Williams, and I'm going to present this to you, and I'm going to, I'm going to turn this over to you so that we can hear what the Spirit is saying through his, his uh, ordained prophet. This came to me that there is a divine expectancy for the believer to evolve, to experience a certified Spirit-filled life one which is victorious in confrontations, victorious in combats and in challenges, and exceeding all limitation, leaping over every restriction. Prophetess Williams, what about this and the authority of the believer? I believe that is so true, that that is indeed what walking or living, if you will, um, in the authority that we have, um, as a believer, I, I love Habakkuk 3 and 19, um, what you read, and, you know, just in reading it and studying it, there's a picture that always comes in my spirit when the prophet was saying that the Lord God is my strength, he's my source of courage, my invincible army, that he has made my feet steady and sure like hind feet and makes me walk forward with spiritual mm. confidence. I think this is out of the Amplified and, and on my high places of challenge and responsibility. And every time I read that, I always picture a deer in my spirit. And, and I can remember one time uh, kind of just studying this out, and it was talking about a hind. It's a female deer that can play her back feet exactly where her front feet uh, had stepped and not one inch is off. It talked about how a hind is able to run unrestricted with complete freedom and, and abandonment. And so I was thinking about that. And, and in times of danger, it talked about how the deer is able to run securely and not get off track and how it's able to, to scale unusually difficult terrain and, and even able to elude predators. And so that got me thinking about the obstacles and the distractions and the problems and even predators that we may be facing in our lives. But the scripture talks about that God, that he has given us the courage, that he is our strength, that he is our invincible army, meaning that nothing can destroy him. And so I love the part that says that he has given us that spiritual confidence to, to cause us to walk forward, not to draw backwards but to be able to walk forward into those high places and be able to fix our gaze up on him, be able to move with him in the authority that he has given us unrestricted by what we encounter in the natural. The Bible says that the steps of a good man, that they are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. And I love how the prophet Habakkuk made a choice that even in the midst of chaos, 
God, he chose to rejoice in the Lord. You know, we got to begin to rejoice in the Lord and rejoice in the authority that God has given us as his people, and not just rejoice in it, but walk in it, live in it day after day after day, because authority, he did not give us authority just to shove it. He did not just give us, he didn't give us authority just so that we could say, oh, I have this authority, but we don't use it, you see, because if you think about a policeman, when, when, when the policeman gets ready, uh, if somebody is speeding, down the street, uh, going faster than what the law has permitted, and the cop pulls someone over, and that person was doing what they pulled them over for, and he decides to write a ticket to him, the policeman doesn't have to call back to the precinct and get permission to write a ticket. He's already in authority to do that. He has the authority to go forth and write this ticket for speeding to this individual. He doesn't have to call back to his chief. He doesn't have to call back to his boss to check with him to see if it's okay for me to write a ticket when this person has broken the law. He's in authority. He has a badge. He has all. He has the gun. He, he, he has everything that he needs. He's went through the proper training. He has everything. Well, God has given us everything as his people. And what divine authority means, that delegated authority that we have in him. And some, sometimes we come back to God asking God, is it okay? And he's saying, I've already given you the authority. Use it. Use the authority that God, we have to use the authority that God has given us. We have to, because that is what we're going to see, I believe, an abundant life come to us. Hmm. I, I believe that if we use the authority that God has given us, this delegated authority, with that authority properly used, we will see an abundance of living, the Zoe kind of life showing up in our life. And so authority is key. We can't get around it. If we don't use it, we're going to continue to have the same cycles. We'll continue to have the same patterns. We'll continue to have the same old, same old. And we'll be wondering and pleading and begging with God to do it and he said, I've already done it, and I gave you authority. You can use it. And so, Apostle, I believe that we got to learn how to extend our authority. It's that scepter that the king has given us, but we're not using our scepter. We're not using our authority. The analogy you made of a police officer, um, they have to go through academy. They have to learn how to exercise the delegated authority given to them yes. and then to be able to apply it without themselves violating the law. And I was looking here, I'm, I'm looking back at my notes here because the book you have written, Free to Be Me, it deals with the identity of who we are in the spirit, which yes. translates over to what we're talking about right now, which translates again over to your analogy of a, of a police officer and the training that yes. he needs to understand I'm not a civilian when I have this uniform and badge on. I am exactly. a representative of the law. I am a representative of what is supposed to be civilly and socially correct. And when it gets out of bounds, my authority is to correct it, whether it's by oral correction, paper correction in, in forms of a ticket, or an arrest correction. Exactly. That's, how a, that's how an officer works. But you said something else. Without, without um, exercising the authority God has given us, we may indeed receive cycles of negativity in our lives. Can you expound on that? Because that's important. Yes. If we do not use the authority that God has given us personally, we will definitely repeat cycles. We will definitely have the same old, same old showing up in our lives. Um, when it comes to the enemy, we allow the enemy, we give him legal entrance. But God has given us the authority over the enemy. But if we don't use that authority, he's going to keep coming back, coming back, coming back, coming back. If we don't use the authority that, that we have in Christ and break some things, then guess what? 
we're going to keep repeating cycles, 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 patterns, 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 demonic patterns, basically, that keeps us in holding patterns. And I don't know about anybody else, but I'm tired of being in, in holding patterns and repeating same cycles. Now, I'm not saying that life doesn't happen. We know that it does. But I'm talking about in the realm of who we are in the spirit. We have authority. But if you don't even know your identity, you don't even know. You can't even comprehend that you have authority if you don't know your identity. Because identity and authority go hand in hand. It goes hand in hand. When I wrote the book, Free to Be Me, and wrote it in one day on Thanksgiving 2010, after we had eaten this big meal, and the spirit, I'm getting ready, cleaned up, and the, and the Spirit of the Lord said, you're going to write a book. It's going to be called Free to Be Me, Who Am I, What Am I, Why Am I, and Now That I Know. Those were the chapters that he gave me. And I literally sat down and wrote as I heard him speak. Stayed up all night and got up at, uh, stayed up all night, laid down about 4 a.m., got up at 6 a.m., and finished that book. And the first chapter is dealing with identity. Who am I? I'm spirit. That's the true essence of who we are. We are spirit beings. That's yes. the essence of who we are. We are we are spirit beings that are housed in these bodies. But we tend to dwell as believers out of the humanity of us more than we do the divinity of us. We are humans in this earth basically having a spiritual experience, but I disagree with that. I am spirit in this earth having a human experience. And so we got to know our identity, and we got to know that when God gave Adam and Eve identity, when he brought them forth, he gave them authority. You are listening to Prophetess Christy Williams here on Life 3.0. Prophetess Williams, you are saying so, so many powerful things, especially in terms of knowing who you are spiritually. Once you understand or at least have an, enough of an understanding of who you are, the next step would be purpose, wouldn't it? And doesn't purpose and authority link? Yes, it does. It does because we see that even in, you know, in the book of Genesis that when God created man and placed him in the garden, he gave him that dominion, but he also gave him purpose. He gave him a purpose. And, you know, I always say that it is imperative that we know um, as a believer what's our purpose. We know that the ultimate purpose is, is to glorify our king. The ultimate purpose is to bring worship and honor to the Lord, but we all have some specific functions. What's your function in the earth? My pastor said one time, you got to have the unction for your function, and that is so <laughs> true. There's an unction yeah. that comes with your function. What did God call you? What realm, what sphere in the earth realm did God place you in your mother's womb and you're birthed out, you're saved? You're bel- what? But this the thing, Apostle. Everybody, all humanity has a function. They may not have the unction of the Holy Ghost, <laughs> but every person <laughs> has a function. And you mm. we can see, if, if, we're, if we're just going to be transparent and real, we can see that the world operates at a greater capacity in their function more than we do in the church because we limit purpose to the four walls of a building. And so, so then the scripture comes in about being wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. Yes. Yes. And you Because the serp- look- the serpent is not contained, is he? That's right. And you can look at you can look at some unsaved people and know when we watch them on T V or whatever that they are in their purpose. It's a God given purpose. And so they have have that they have a function that they're doing and there's an unction in the sense of it's on the inside of them that they know what they're called to do. You know? And so 
we we limit purpose. We limit purpose. We limit it again to what we think is acceptable within the frame of our mind or within church. But there are people that sit on our pews that's called and have the, the, the grace and the measure to become president, to, to sit on the seat of the Senate. There are people, my daughter, she's a great makeup artist, crying because she just couldn't find her place in church in the four walls of it with the makeup, but it's in the kingdom. And I told her, mm-hmm. I said, you do your purpose. Yes. Open up a bit and show them what a kingdom representative looks like right there while you applying somebody makeup. And let the glory be released because glory is released from your purpose. Authority comes with purpose. It, authority mm. comes with your assignment. And so if we're not walking in our assignment, if we're not functioning in our purpose, if you will, then do we really have authority? Do we really have authority that's showing up, or do we just have the boss mentality? Because authority means more than being a boss. Explain that, woman of God. To me, anybody can be a boss. I, I, you know, I can go out and I can make me a boss T-shirt and I can put it on and I can exercise some form of authority or try to. But let's take a business owner that hires a, a, a manager. This business owner a hire manager and give that manager authority to manage to run his or her business. Mm-hmm. And the manager will run it, but it doesn't mean that the manager owns it. The, right. uh, the, the, he is not the boss. It still belongs to the, bo- the business owner. He was hired to, to operate it, and he still has to give an account. He still has to be responsible. There's still accountability there. And so being a boss without really having an assignment or even accountability that's not the authority that God has given us. We have authority with our purpose, and that's why we, it, it's imperative that we get in that function because that's where we're going to find our realm, our sphere of influence, where we're going to find uh, the oil, if you will. That's yeah. why we can be in certain arenas and it doesn't fit, it doesn't work, even though we have all the necessary tools and we know what we're supposed to say, but we're out of position, out of place, and it, it won't fit there. But if we move to another place, it will work perfectly fine because our assignment and our purpose are fitting the need at that particular place. Amen. That is definitely it, uh, Apostle, because we have the tools, but we don't have the oil. Mm. And you can have the tools for something and not be anointed for it. I have the tools to do a lot of things, but I'm not anointed to do it. I need to oh my goodness. in my kitchen. <laughs> we, and you can have tools that work, but they're not oily. And so I can go into this place or go over in that lane because I know how to do it, but am I all for it? Because if there's no oil on me, then guess what? I won't be effective and impactful to the lives of other people. What I will begin to do is walk in a boss mentality and begin to lord my authority over someone. Unauthorized. Unauthorized. Yeah, we talked about being unauthorized, yes. <laughs> yes, we did. We did. See, because what I'm learning is we often seek, many people seek authority for many different mm. reasons. I think man seeks the position of authority, and you can seek the position of authority but still lack the character and the integrity to lead. Just because you're in authority doesn't mean that you are a leader. Because God deals with character, too. I I, I think character is primarily, and I think the position of a thing is secondarily. And I think Mm -hmm. that if God 
we know that he's given us this, this authority. And so he wants us to not only operate in it, but he wants us to operate in it in a manner that is pleasing to him. And I also believe that we've gotten away from really functioning in that delegated authority in the realm of which he created it to be. And if it's not operating in order of him, then it's out of order. It's out of order. It, it becomes unauthorized because that's not the plan. That's not the way that he designed it to flow. And so we have to be careful, even uh, apostle in, in, our, in our churches and as leaders, we have to be careful and make sure that, that those of us that are in authority, that we're using it in the manner that is pleasing to God. Because yes. I believe it was in Titus when, when Paul was telling um, uh, uh, Timothy, uh, you know, let no one disregard you. Now, he, he wasn't telling Timothy to uh, don't let anybody look down on you because of your youthfulness or, or, or you know, all of this. But he was, oh, I put you in charge and you get up and let the phone know. He was letting him know. No, he told him, he said, but rather in speech and conduct and love and faith and purity, you are to show yourself as an example to those who believe. Mm -hmm. And so with authority, there comes an example. Yeah, this is, a, this is very important because if you are not under divine anointed authority, you're actually operating in fig leaf authority. Yes. You're so operating. now instead of, yes, and, and you are, you're not operating under the release of the creator, you're operating under the, the, the authority, the release of the authority of what was created. Exactly. Because anything about God, everything about God, from the beginning, divine authority versus order. And so he, he, he's a God of order. And so if things are, are, are out of order, if we begin to operate in a, out of a, this, this authority that he has given us in a manner that he has not commanded us to, and, uh, and we, we begin to go our own way and think that, you know, I can just lord this over people's lives and, you know, I'm the boss here. And I'm not saying we usurp authority like that. But what I am saying is there, there's a spirit, a good spirit that comes with divine authority. And we have to stay within the measure of grace of the spirit of God. It's, it's with the spirit of God that we operate and flow and function out of the authority of God because he's the supreme authority. And it's like you said um, on our first broadcast, we have delegated authority. Yes. And as I was stating about um, the, 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 the manager has to report back to the business owner, he has to give an account. Guess what? One day we're going to stand before the Lord and we're going to have to give an account to of the authority of how we use it, a purpose. Oh. What do we do with it? And did we use because, it right? Because we are managers and stewards of, of this earth. Exactly. It doesn't belong to us. <laughs> the authority doesn't belong to us. Our purpose don't belong to us. It really belongs to him. So how am I stewarding? My life don't even belong to him. How am, but I'm in authority in my life. So how am I stewarding my life? What am I allowing to come into my garden of Eden, my life? What am I giving authority to? Because what I give authority to, I give access to. Yes. That works two ways. Yes. Wow. You are listening to Prophetess Christy Williams on Life 3.0. The topic is the authority of the believer. Brothers and sisters, I hope you're listening because there's, there are points here that if you it will let them be attracted to you, if you will accept them, if you will draw them in, 
You will grow in Christ Jesus. You will understand why you're alive at such a time as this. Your purpose, which is essential, you must know why you're alive. And in that discovery of purpose, you will be, as Prophetess Williams had so eloquently said, the anointing for authority in that purpose will be manifested through you in the spirit. In other words, you will know when you're on point, and you will know when you have to be quiet. You will know the difference between the two. But when you are on point and operating and functioning through the spirit, on purpose, through the anointing, you will see manifestations even like Christ manifested here on the earth. And Prophetess Williams, I, I thank you for bringing that out. You know, when you, was, you even went back to our own personal Garden of Eden, one of the things that needs to be looked at is the discovery of purpose and the discovery of, of authority. And I noticed that that comes back, as you referenced, to Genesis 1, 26 to 28. There is a description of this new creature that God has created called man. And in, in, in that description, there's, there's some very definitive uh, points there. I looked at that over and over through the years, and I keep coming up with the same uh, conclusion. This mm -hmm. isn't the description of a farmer or a ditch digger. Wow. <laughs> this, is no, this is not an ordinary situation, even before the advent or the knowledge that there is a fallen angel who used to be Lucifer and is now called Satan was even upon the face of this earth. This edict as to what this new creature is supposed to do, the purpose of him even existing is yes. articulated in Genesis 1, 26 through 28. Yes. Where is that individual? So what you're saying to us today is through Christ, this individual, this new creature must emerge. This new, yes. This new creature had to emerge because if the new creature don't emerge, then we're going to have the same things show up in our community, in our world, in our nation, in our lives. The new creature had to emerge. Hear me by the Spirit when I say this. We cannot fully be the new creatures that we are created and purpose to be is still stuck in a fallen state. The mind had to be renewed. It had to be renovated. The thought patterns have to be changed. And there are a lot of things that we grew up on and that we learned, but there are some things that we learned wrong concerning us as believers. And so we have to go to the Word, and we have to have the Holy Spirit to reveal truth to us. And we have to be willing to say, that's not right. <laughs> I, I know I've been doing it for 20 years this way, and maybe grandmother taught me this because I was taught that speaking in tongues was a thing of the past. Well, I'm grateful that I'm filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues because my life changed. And so we, we've been taught a lot of wrong things, Apostle, and we become one with things that are wrong. And I'm here to prophesy that we are in a time and in an hour and in a season where God is saying, come back to the original pattern, that he wants to break some things off of us because he's ushering the body of Christ into this new era. And this new era is basically taking us back to the original. We've been talking about, you know, we don't see the power of God. Where's the power of God? Well, it's not coming because we're not walking in authority. We don't know who we are. We don't know who, who the church is supposed to be. We put our fingerprints on the church instead of the blueprints of God. We're the church. We're the ones that are supposed to be set up in, in this authoritative mm. realm. 
okay? We're the ones that's in authority. We're the ones that's supposed to go into the highways, the byways, and compel men, women, boys, and girls to come. But guess what? Not just compel them with our words, compel them with our life, compel them with the power that when the apostle shows up, when the prophet shows up, when I have a saint show up on my job, I'm not complaining about the headache like my coworker is. I'm saying, come here, baby. I got power on the inside of me to lay hands on the sick and command you to recover. I got the power of God and the authority backing me up that I can pray over you that when I step into a place, then there should be an apostolic prophetic shift that begins to take place, that I don't have to lay down, and even though I'm going through trials and tribulations, he's made my feet like hind's feet. That, yes, I can stand, that I can see, that I can be still in a mountaintop even though my life is in a valley. Yes, Mm. I went through the death of Greg Williams here on February the 17th, but guess what? My spirit was still seated in the heavenly realm in Christ Jesus. That's why people ask me, how in the world are you getting through? It's only been six months. Why? Because I don't grieve like those who do do not have any hope. Yes, I grieve, but I'm not overtaken by a spirit of grief. Why? Because my spirit knows. When the form of me can't pray, spirit taps in. And spirit begins to speak, and spirit begins to utter. And spirit is where the power lies. It's not lying in the form. It's lying in the function of the Holy Ghost. And so we got to be believers that know our, our identity and our authority. And does my character align itself with the authority that God has given me? And am I willing to go through the process that I may have to face? Am I willing to go through it but go through it with authority, knowing that he has made my feet like hind's feet, that he is my invisible army, that he is Jehovah Giver, the one who fights for me? And I can rest in that. And I can call those things that be not as though they are because they already were. (laughs) In the heaven. Hmm. See, we keep trying to pray earth into heaven. God wants heaven to manifest in the earth. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What does it look like in heaven? There's no sickness and disease. Nobody's fretting. Nobody's worrying. Nobody's worried how they're going to pay bills. None of that. They don't have, they don't have, what does it look like in heaven? And why don't we have it in the earth? I'll tell you why. Because the sons are not coming forth. We still got slaves with fig leaves on. We won't wear our, our priestly garments because we're still covered in fig leaves. We won't mm. wear our kingly identity and garment because the enemy keeps telling us we're slaves. The enemy keeps showing us a false identity of ourselves. He's still having us look, he, even though we're saved, he still replays the old man to us. And we're buying into it. And we can't operate out of the old man, out of the old nature, and expect something different. No, we can't. You spoke of the process, woman of God, the process, the process which removes the old nature. That can be a pretty painful thing. Oh, yes. We have allowed the old nature to be a crutch for our life, and now that crutch has been kicked out, and we have to learn how to stand on our own two feet and acknowledge the God that we have, we have ignored for so long and demonstrate the kind of life that we have not even recognized previously. Amen. That's quite, that's quite a process. It is a process. It's, it's a process, like you said, it's not easy. But I'm telling you, it's necessary. It, it may, it's not easy, but it is necessary. And I, I often think about, I, I remember writing something one time about process. And I can remember I was looking outside, and I had I have this big tree outside, and it was a changing of seasons. And we were going from fall into winter. And during the fall, you know, the leaves had changed, and the leaves were beginning to fall on the ground. 
But during, as it was going into winter, I remember looking out and there was no leaf in sight on that tree. It was completely bare. There was a stripping that took place. And I noticed that even though the stripping had took place and the tree was bare of its leaves, even looking at it, it was still standing majestic. It was still rooted. It was still grounded, even though the leaves of it had fallen off. And I knew that, a, that after winter was open, things would begin to bud again on this tree, you know, that it would come into its new season. And that's the way it is with us. we got to be willing to allow ourselves to be stripped by the Holy Ghost. We got to allow him to strip us of some things, knowing that the stripping is, is, is it, it will produce a newness in us. It will take us into a new season, if you will, and that even in the midst of a stripping, we can still stand knowing that our God is with us. We can still stand in the midst of a process knowing that transformation is taking place. When the earth was without form and void, it lacked order. The Bible talked about how there was darkness on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over that, over the face of the waters. It talked about how God said, let there be light, and there was light. God did not have to go and create the light when he said it. He didn't have to go create it because he is light. What he said was, and it was seen in the earth realm. And so there was a process of transformation that began to take place in the earth. And God, it, there's a process of transformation that he even used with, with the creation of Adam, of man. Let us make man in our image and according to our likeness. He created man in his own image. How he, he, he took dirt, <laughs> breathed into this form of a man that he created out of dust, out of dirt, and man became a living. So we need the breath of God. Yes. We need the breath of God. Mm. The breath of God again. We need the breath of God. Because we, we, Apostle, we've been trying to breathe into our own purpose. We've been trying to breathe into our own marriages. We've been trying to breathe into our, we've been releasing our breath. Man's breath becomes stale. God's breath always is fresh. We need the mm. God-breathed kind of life. Yes. We need his breath. And I can remember asking him, God, your word declares that you formed this man out of the dust of the ground, and you breathed, the Bible says, into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. And that when I was writing the book, I said, why you didn't breathe in his mouth, Lord? And I remember so specifically he said, because I was not trying to resuscitate man. He said, I hmm. breathe into his nostrils because nostrils are the passageway of life. That's where man breathes. He said, I wasn't trying to give him mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. Oh, to revive goodness. him, I was bringing him alive. I was making him alive. So I breathe air into the nostril, which represented the passage of life. Not resuscitation. I wasn't trying to resuscitate him. I was, I was creating life out of dirt. And I can remember hearing mm. a pastor say one time how he, he said he was just amazed how he was in the shower. And he began to worship the Lord because he realized he, that he's nothing but dust. But even standing in the shower, the dust of him was not going into the drain. <laughs> he said, I'm nothing more than dirt. And even standing under all this water, it's amazing how you can just praise the Lord that dirt is not going in the drain. We serve an amazing God. <laughs> yeah. he, is, he is, oh, he, there, sometimes I can't even find the, the, the right vocabulary to even, to, to even worship him. He's given mm. authority. So we can't just keep our badge hidden in a drawer, hidden in a journal, hidden in, mm. in, in insecurity, in fear. No, we got to take the badge of authority out and use it because the enemy, that's what he wants. He wants us to hide our badge of authority.
My name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Why am I just allowing the adversary to do what he wants to do in my life? Take your bag, your badge out. Exercise your rights as a kingdom citizen. Isn't it amazing mm-hmm. how we will exercise our rights, Apostle, as a church goer? Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. But we get how it comes to being a kingdom citizen. That's you had mentioned life. about uh, be having a, a, a Sunday anointing. <laughs> yes. You know, but the rest of the week it seems to disappear. Outside of those four walls is where is the battlefield. It's where confrontation is. It is. That is that is where the rubber meets the road. You're listening to Prophetess Christy Williams here on Life 3.0, and this was our last segment coming up. There is so much that has been said and so much that has been poured out from this mighty, powerful woman of God. Um, again, if you need to contact her, you can contact her at Christy Williams Ministries at gmail.com. That's Christy with an I and an E, Williams Ministries, all one word, at gmail.com. I am, I tell you, prophetess, you inspire me so much with how the Spirit of God uses you, your insight, your wisdom, your application, how you be able to present a situation in a way that we all can digest it. You could go the complete theological way and give us all of this exegesis and homiletics and all this sort of stuff, but you come across with a way that we all can understand it, like the analogy of the police officer and the authority that he has and um, how he has to use it the right way or he'll lose it. And I was thinking about the garment, you know, what she was talking about as far as his, as his appearance. His appearance changes. Now, when he is not a police officer, in other words, when his shift is over and he is off duty, he changes his uniform and converts into a civilian who now must obey the law while in uniform he must utilize the authority to implement. Wow. You had spoken about something earlier that I want you to touch on one more time, and this is you spoke about the changing of a garment. A couple of nights ago, my wife had a vision about a particular uh, pastor that we know, and in that vision, she had to present him with a change of garment, but also the area of his responsibility, the area of his authority has to coincide with the change of the garment. That's right. You cannot wear a new garment with an old, with an outdated authority, and you cannot have an authority that's going to resist an unclean environment while you're wearing a new garment. And so she had to call that pastor and let him know that what she saw and uh, to give him that, that piece of information. How he receives it, or anybody receives the changed garment, I think we need to talk about that because how you can hear a prophecy, and it could talk about you stepping from a place where you was just operating on humanistic faith uh, and, and uh, a platform of humanism, as you mentioned earlier, and now putting on a garment changes everything because that new garment makes you step into a new realm. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. And I can remember um, before my uh, husband passed, that was one of the words that the Lord had had given me, that he was changing my garments. And he told Mm. me that with my garments changing, that my authority was changing, my realm was changing, my sphere of influence was changing, even divine connections would begin to happen to match the garment, and he also told mm. me that there would be a tightening up with with things dealing with my character, things dealing with with with, with because when when the garment changed, the life shifts, and everything has to match the conduct, the character, all of that has to come in alignment with with this garment change. And so I know we have nowadays just a lot of people, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm a, I love mantles and 
mandates, but we got where a lot of people hollering this mantle and, and, and I want that mantle. And well, guess what? When God gives mantles, when he, when he dresses you out in new garments, there's, there's a responsibility that comes with that. There's an accountability that comes with that. You cannot wear a new garment in an old season. You cannot. Ooh. You cannot wear a new garment in an old season. So it's not just a garment change, but the season of a thing has ended, and you, you, and it has changed. He began to tell me not long after he gave me that word before Greg died, he kept saying, your season has changed. Your time has come. This is your new beginning. And this was all last year before my husband died, and I didn't know what all of that meant. But as I'm, you know, as God began to give me some greater understanding and really begin to show me some things, I'm understanding a little bit more, you know. But mm-hmm. I'll say it mm-hmm. again. You cannot wear a new My garment. Goodness. In a so there was a preparation for the process and, and the preparation for the change of garment. Exactly. There, there, is, there is that preparation. And that is just like you cannot... You know, that would be like us down here in the South in July, hot as it is, if I decided to go and step out in a, a mink coat. I got on a garment, and I got it on in the wrong season. Mm. And, and so you, you got to know the, the sons of Issachar, they were able to discern the times and the, and the seasons of God. You got to know when a season has changed for you. You got to know. God lets you know that that garment has changed. And so oftentimes, Apostle, we're so familiar and comfortable in an old season that even though God is putting a new garment on us, we, we don't shift with garments. We'll lay the new garment down and to stay in an old season. And we'll say with our lips, well, I want a move of God. I, I want the mandate of God to be on our lives, on my life. I want, I want to go into a new season, but we still stuck because we're stuck in familiarity and we're stuck in loyalty to systems and people. And we won't go to that place that God has taken us because to go and to wear a new garment, to step into a new season means I got to leave something old behind. We don't want to leave the old behind. We want to take Lot with us, and when we take Lot with us, Lot ends up costing us a lot. That, if you will, is one of the things that I believe that apostolically, prophetically, that the Lord is doing in this season with his church. The garment of the thing is shifting, and it's going back to the original, the wineskin of it. The wineskin of the church has to shift back to the original model for the new wine that God is pouring out. And anytime we start talking about the original or going back to the original, people have a tendency to think, oh, you're just trying to bring me back up under the law. No, let me tell you something. There is a blueprint that God has already established as a plumb line. We don't get to change it. And we made mm-hmm. church become, we made church become, uh, like a supermarket, that's where consumers go. And if you got the right stuff as a supermarket, or you would try to put in the right stuff because you want to please the consumer more than you want to please the king. And so we got people in church, they like to shop down the sugary aisle of the supermarket. They, they, they want the sugar-coated words. They want the just make me hype. Just give me this, give me that. You can let me be hyper, just don't give me no hope, no real hope. So I want the sugary cereal type of uh, 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 preaching. I, I, I want that. I want you to prophesy the, the houses and the cars and the land to me, but don't say nothing about my character. Don't, don't, don't bring no correction. Don't bring no rebuke to me. And then we like them that, that babies that like to just stay on the nipples, don't want to grow up. So we'll just feed them to accommodate them. We're trying to accommodate all of these consumers and what they want. And then you got people that's hungry for meat, but we'll let them starve. Because yes. we won't feed them the meat of the word because we got these other consumers over here that we're thinking about. And if the if the supermarket is not meeting our need, guess what the consumer gonna do? They gonna look at another supermarket church that's right next to yours and they're gonna go over there. And they're going to sit right there, and they'll stay there as long as they've been fed what it is that their appetite wants, what they want, not what God wants for them, but what they want. And then they'll stay right there until they get mad if the leader changes and decides to feature something else. 
and then they'll change their mind. But see, church is not Burger King. We don't get to have it our way. We got to have it his way. We must please the king. That's what I'm saying. We have to please the king. We're not there to please consumers. We're there to please the king. The Bible says contend for the faith. We have to preach yes. the whole truth of God, not just what we like and what we like to hear, because we are in an we are in an era where error is profound with, amongst us, amongst the church, where the era of of, of doctrine, where the era of of all this prophetic pathetic. Stuff is going forth. There needs to be a purging and a purifying that comes forth. People now, apostles, they can take tests on Facebook, come back saying they're apostles, and the next thing you know, they got big ministry cards, business card with apostles. Ain't been proven in nothing except for witchcraft portals on Facebook that they opening up. It's mm-hmm. foolishness. And we got souls that are going to hell day after day after day. And I just released a clarion call to the body of Christ. And I say that it is time for us to come out of our sleep and out of our slumber. I say that this is the hour and the season that the church must awaken to her true identity and her true authority. And we must not just operate in it. We must live in it. Because to operate just in it, that means that we can take it on and take it off at will. No, we must live in it day in and day out in our home. Our kids need to see the power of God. They need to see the power of the Holy Ghost in our lives. They need to see the power of God in our marriages. They need to see the power of God in widowhood. They need to see the power of God in my singleness. They need to see the power of God when I'm walking through a supermarket. They need to see the power of God. Not just me talking it, but me walking it, me living it, me becoming it. I need to be one with the Holy Ghost. I need to be one with the authority of him in my life. I need it because... Too many times our kids only, they, if they can only witness authority in us in a church building, but they can't witness authority in us in our own homes. That's not real authority that comes from the Lord. Mm-hmm. That is not real authority because the authority of God is a garment that stays on us. It's robed in righteousness. It's dipped in the blood of the Lamb. There's nothing fig leaf about it. It's authentic, and it is pure, and it is powerful. Good. But we have a choice on whether we're going to use it or not. And that is the truth. There's authority, all authority on this human plane, if you will. It's, it's, it's here. And whoever resists authority opposes the ordinance of God. How can we see authority with government? We see it with local church. We see it with them. There's authority everywhere we look. And as believers, we obey the laws of the land. But we will not obey the kingdom laws, if you will, that governs our lives. Listen, we have had good church. But it, look, it's time for us to know how to govern some things. We're set in the earth to govern, to legislate, demonstrate. Yeah. What are we legislating? We're the House of Representatives in the earth. We don't like policies. We change them. But we don't change them by gossiping. We change them by getting their position. And that's going to cause us to be uncomfortable because maybe... You're the prophet that's supposed to go sit with the president and speak life and decree and declare unto him the word of God. But because it may make you look bad to friends or you may get talked about because you were with with President Mm -hmm. Trump, we don't do it. I want God to send me. (laughs) 
wherever he wants, wherever I'm supposed to be, where my authority shows up in him, and the oil begins to flow and unlock lives and destiny, the regions and destiny of nations and destiny of community. Not just to shun the rebe or, or go to a conference all the time. Nothing wrong with conferences. But if conferences are not birthing me to change and for me to impact, then am I just going to be a conference copper instead of mm. being a life changer? We're getting fat, Apostle. And I say that with all due respect. We're getting fat. We're eating a lot of stuff. But we're not eliminating anything. We're not releasing it. We're hoarders in the spirit. We're hoarding things. And we're not going forth and discipling nation for the kingdom. But God is mm. raising up a people that's hungry and thirsty. He's raising up a people that don't care about their reputation. He's raising up a people that knows I'm more concerned about the authority to change a thing than I am about my reputation to be a thing to a people or for somebody. No. He's raising up a people that that are stand and decree boldly and declare boldly his word. He's looking for a people. He's raising up a people that won't compromise, that won't sell out to Babylon, that are step into Babylon and bring light into the darkness, that will go into the valley of Babylon knowing they have hind feet to stand on a mountain and subdue it. I think uh, Prophetess Williams about the scripture in Matthew and where the Lord is talking about uh, you are the light. You are like, like a city sit on top of a hill. And what you were just saying, the light is the is authority in action. Yes. It is manifested most brilliantly when it is contrasted with darkness. In other words, yes. it's good to be light during the day, but you but but it's more effective in the darkest areas. Yes. Yeah. So, so we must we must come out of those comfort zones. That's the everything you said. The change of garment, the process, everything that the, I like what you said earlier. The process of transformation, the garment of authority, the changing of season, even wearing the mink stole. Everything that you have said transports us, transfixes us, transforms us. Going from point A to point B to point C in a process which strengthens us in that authority and taking that authority into the dark places and setting them on fire. Yes. Amen. That's how the authority works. What he was talking about was enough of a candlelight that your room is lit. In other words, your sphere of influence is lit, but it is going to draw those who dwell in darkness. The scripture says in Proverbs that the spirit of a man is a candle of the Lord. All right? But what it doesn't say is that the candle's lit. Amen. Amen. If you are a lit candle, brothers and sisters, if you know that that Almighty God has lit your wit, spiritually speaking, you are a bright light. You are that light sitting on that hill. Yes. Your responsibility, your purpose is, is found in the arena of lighting other lights, especially unsaved folk, so that they yes. too would be part of that hill. Amen. That is it. Purpose and authority. Yes, that, that is exactly it. We must. And, you know, we get comfortable at these candles, and we won't go into the dark places, allow ourselves to go into the dark places. And so we'll yes. stay right there where we're comfortable, light, instead of going into the dark places. But that's what we've been sent for, to go into the dark places and be the light yes. in the earth realm. Well, Prophetess Williams, I, 
the Holy Spirit just keeps pouring more into you and more into you. And I, I, I don't know, this is, has just been awesome. I have learned so much listening to what the Spirit is saying through you. I thank God for you. I thank him for the Spirit that he's placed in you to, to have this powerful voice, this insight, this revelation. Brothers and sisters, I hope that you have heard something from Prophetess Christy Williams that has inspired you to look deeper within yourself, to find out, as she wrote in her book, and I'm going I'm to bring that up one more time, that the book that she wrote, and maybe she'll tell us how we can find the book, is Free to Be Me. And one of the things it deals with is, and it certainly deals with this, is the identity of who we are in the spirit. You must know this no matter what else you do. Yes, you're saved. Why am I saved? Yes, you're, you're, you're born again. You're baptized. All right, all of these things are essential. But what about your spirit man, your spirit woman? That's the real living you. That's the eternal you living on the inside of this flesh. You can go to any cemetery or you can go to any funeral and you'll see the remains and the markers of a life that lived in the flesh. But it's the spirit that's departed that has stopped that body from functioning. Amen. Anytime you want to, if that's the way it is, there you are a spirit being. Her book is called Free to Be Me. Where can we find that book, Prophetess? You can get it actually on um, Amazon, or you can mm -hmm. email me. I have some here, and I can ship you an autographed copy of, of it. And they can they can read yes. an autographed copy. I don't even have an autographed copy. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna okay. <laughs> get my own. <laughs> and you can reach her at Christy Williams Ministries. That's Christy with an I E Williams Ministry, all one word at gmail dot com. If you're a leader, if you're scheduling a life changing conference, this is a person you need to have at your conference because things will change. Life will change. The atmosphere will change. Not because she's braggadocious, she's, she's big-headed. No, none of this thing is because the Spirit of God that's moving through her. You can hear it in her voice. You can hear it in how she's articulating what needs to change, how things can change, where we are, who we are, what we are supposed to do, how to, how to receive authority, how to exercise authority. You heard all of that in the two sessions that we had. This is life-changing things. This is what the church is supposed to do. Hear these types of messages. Move upon the people in such a way that they are not just church goers, they are kingdom builders. This is what it's all about, brothers and sisters. And so if you have a conference, if you're looking for a speaker who is going to bring wholesale spiritual change and empower not only the leadership, but the congregation, the neighborhood, the community, Christy Williams Ministries at gmail.com. You can contact her there. The book, again, is called Free to Be Me. Who we are in the spirit is an essential thing. Let's, let us learn that. I've been trying to preach that for many years. It's, um, it's difficult when you don't know where to start. But once you get started, it's something that is essential. You can also listen to her every Sunday morning at 8.30 Central Standard Time on the Awakening Show with Prophetess Christy Williams. That is going to be on radio station KTOY. 104.7, and uh, you can find an app for that. Get the app for no other reason. If you have no other reason to get that app, get the app for Sunday morning so that you can hear what she's saying fresh every time is something fresh every Sunday morning. Uh, Prophetess William, is there anything else you might want to add and, and then you can close us out? I just really wanted to thank you, Apostle, for the opportunity. It has just been a pleasure, and I'm just so grateful. I'm so grateful to you. I'm so uh, grateful to uh, Prophet Espouser. I'm grateful that God connected us exactly when he did uh, for such a time as this. And let me tell you, I, I believe that we are really getting ready to see such a great manifestation of God uh, through the church. I believe that he is getting ready to manifest his glory in unusual ways. That was one of the words that he gave me uh, in May, actually, that he was doing unusual things 
but the unusual mm. is just to take us back to the original. Take us back to the original. So listen, we let's let's rise up, church. Let the apostolic church arise. Let the pure prophetic come forth, and let's begin to shift nations and regions and territories and lands and and lives uh, for the glory of God. And so I'm grateful. It's almost like we're in the best of times and worst of times because there there will be things that's going to come, exposure, and there will be some chaos. Anytime there is a shift, there's a switch. <laughs> and it's mm. in the midst of a, a prophetic shift and a apostolic shift and switching and things like that, you know, there, there are things, that, and there are things that God's going to have to judge. Uh, really, he he really is, and I know we don't like to talk about that because what we're we're doing now is we're loving people to hell, and and we are called to love, but we're loving without truth. And any time we begin to do that, we mislead people. And so there are some things that that God, but he, His glory and His grace is going to be in the midst of it. But He is Jesus is not coming back as Lamb. He's lion, and the lion of tribe of Judah is roaring. He is roaring, and so we are victorious. So let's rise up and on our hind feet and just just be at that. Let's have mountaintop living, even in low valley experience. We experiences. I hear the spirit of the Lord saying that even in low valley experiences, we can still have an encounter with mountaintop living, and that's what the authority is about. Hey, Amen. That. Ooh, the fountain doesn't shut down, does it? <laughs> wow. <laughs> that is powerful. Even though we're living in the having a valley experience, yes. the mountaintop is still available. The mountaintop mm. is still available. Do you have, will you use your key of authority and go there? Will you use your key of authority? and unlock mm. yourself <laughs> to go through that door of mountaintop living. Now, see, woman of God, you, 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 now there you go. And because, because that door is a place of transition. It's a door of transition. And we've been laying in the valley, looking at closed doors for so long, and we've been laying like the man that was at the pool of Bethesda. And we've been saying, will somebody put me in? Will somebody get me in? Will somebody get me in? Well, the Spirit of the Lord wants you to know that he has given you the key. He has given you the key to unlock the door. He has given you the key to go through the door. But you got to get up, and you got to stand like that deer on hind feet. And you got to know that I'm with an invincible army. And although I may be in a valley place, it's a valley place, y'all, to lose your husband through death for 32 years. It's a valley place. But even in my valley place, I cannot tell you the mountaintop encounters with the Lord and the mountaintop living that I am experiencing. How in the world can you experience mountaintop living when you're in a valley? I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will feel no evil. <laughs> He's with mm. me. And I realized that when Greg got that scripture came, it was the best. I'm in the valley of the shadow of death. His death. But I will not allow the shadows of death to suffocate the light of life that God has for me. And so I'm, I'm one of those that I believe that God is teaching me how to stand on my hind feet apostle in a valid place and know that the invincible army of who he is, that angels are surrounding me. So you, we got angels fighting for us. You got to put your angels on assignment. Give them something to do. Learn how to war in the spirit. We got to stop just laying down, taking everything. Rise up in authority. We can't be in true hmm. apostolic church if we're afraid of authority. Woman of God, would you mind praying and letting the people know what's in store for them? I mean, just let the Lord use you and pray us through. 
Hallelujah. I just want the people of God to know that we are in, as I said, one of the greatest seasons I truly believe for the church. But I also believe that there is a there is a charge to the church to come and be separate and to be the church, this apostolic church that God planned that in the book of Acts, how they turned the world upside down for Jesus. That it's time out for foolishness. It's time out for branding our own platforms. It's time to lift up the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I believe that we are in a time and we are in a season where God is gathering a people. He's gathering a people and he's putting together apostolic teams, apostolic gatherings that will go into regions and go into cities and nations and begin to decree and declare the living word of God. God's word is alive. The word is Christ. The word is him. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. Hallelujah. And so every word that God has spoken over your life, that word is supposed to become flesh and dwell among men so that man can see the word in action. Hallelujah. And glorify our God who is in heaven. And so I believe that God is saying in this hour, in this season, church arise. He's saying that I am pouring out a new wine and the old wine skin won't be able to contain it. So you got to go through the stripping. You got to go through the removal. You got to go through the process of change so that transformation can come. That what he is doing in this unusual season, it is taking us back to the original blueprint and foundation. And so I even now just prophesy to those who are listening that you are in an unusual season, that you are in an unusual hour, that you are in an unusual time. Unusual means rare. God is doing a rare thing, and he's doing it in you. God is doing unusual gatherings. He's using unusual means, podcasts, Facebook. We're using whatever in an unusual way to bring our people together, to uh, Sound to sound and alarm and to say now is the time that you will arise. And I speak that over you. I speak to those on today that are in valley places. I say that the valley places will not suffocate the mountaintop living that God has created for you, that you will rise up on hind feet and you will go with the invincible army that has already gone before you, that Jehovah give up, that he is fighting for you, that he is your defender. I Speak to those in the spirit. Oh, on this evening, those who do not know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, and I say that the power and the spirit of God, hallelujah, will reach you where you are, and that salvation, hallelujah, shall come to you. I decree and declare that many souls will be snatched out of hell in the name of Jesus, and they will come into the full knowledge of Christ. I decree and declare that there will be a great great harvesting of souls, that God is moving by his spirit in an unprecedented way, and what held us hostage then will no longer hold us hostage now. I decree and declare that things that are burdening us, that have bent us, that have caused us to stoop, that in the presence of the king, just like the bent woman with her issue, I decree and declare that we are being straightened in the name of Jesus, and as he straightened that woman, he gave her identity because he called her that she was a daughter of Abraham. And so even now, I decree and declare that your identity, your image is coming into focus, that your purpose is being revealed unto you in this hour like never before, that God is putting a clarity and a wisdom on the inside of you, that you will know what to do, when to do it, that he will divinely connect you with the right people at the right time in the right places and Shando Revelamaka for his glory to be revealed. I decree and declare that God will put you with voices and Shaka with right authority that will be able to act 
activate what God has put on the inside of you. I decree and declare that those who are in abusive relationships of authority, that you will come out in the name of Jesus. And God will put you with apostles and he will put you with prophets and he will put you with leaders that will not abuse you, that will not allow your gift to be suffocated, your grace not to flow, that he will put you with a people that will train you, will equip you for the work of the ministry. I decree and declare that apostolic prophetic sinners are being birthed all over the regions and nations in the name of Jesus that will equip people, that will train them, that will activate them, oh, and send them forth. Oh, I decree and declare that we will no longer be pew sitters, but we will be water walkers in the name of Jesus. For I hear the spirit of the Lord saying, come. I bid you to come. I bid you to come into your destiny. I bid you to come into your image. I bid you to come into your prophetic identity. I bid you to come into the apostolic grace and anointing that I have on your life. No longer will you sit back in insecurity. The Spirit of the Lord said, stop being secure in insecurity. Stop being secure in insecurity. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, we take a authority over the spirit of fear. So you did not give us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. And so, God, I say, let your power and let your love begin to flow. And as it does, God, there will be soundness of mind. I thank you, oh, Robo Shaka, God, that you are doing it for your name, sake, and for your glory. I thank you that your church, oh, God, shall go forth and do mighty exploits for you, oh, God. And in this hour of changing of the garment, you you are changing the garment to change the guards. You are changing the garment to change the guard. And so we get in position and we stay in it. And we look to the heels and shot from what cometh our help, but we know that it comes from you. And God, we thank you that it is your anointing that destroys every yoke and lifts every burden. I pray for this man of God, and where you are taking him, where you are taking in them. I thank you for the power of increase. I thank you, oh God, that when he speaks things, oh God, that this earth, oh God, is subject to him, oh God. God, I thank you that everything that you have planned for him, oh God, before the beginning of time, even before you placed him in his mother womb, God, I thank you for the manifestation of those things even now. Father, I thank you for greater. I thank you for greater. I thank you for greater. Super natural doors open for him. In the name of Jesus, everything that's been held up concerning him, God, I say that it's coming into fruition, into the manifestation even now. In the name of Jesus, Father, and God, I bless you for him. I bless you for prophetess Bowser. I bless you for their household. And Father, I thank you for the wisdom, the revelation, the mysteries of how you have revealed yourself unto him, oh God. God, I pray that he will not grow weary in well-doing. Oh God, but in due season, oh God, I thank you that his due season is here. The D-U-E, oh God, the D-U-E for the D-E-W to D-O. The do-do-do, the do-do-do kind of season, oh God. Yes, the due season, oh God, for the D-E-W, God, just as it ran down the mouth of Hebron. Oh God, I thank you that it's running on him. For him to do the works, the D.O., to do the works that you have created and purposed and called him to do. He and prophet is bowed through, God. And God, I just bless you for him. We bless you for the gifts that they are to the body of Christ. And God, we just give you all the glory and all of the praise in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Hallelujah Lord. Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Do, do, do. Oh do, 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 do. Do, do, do. The spirit of do, do, do. The spirit of do, do, do. The D-U-E. The D-E-W. And the D-O. <laughs> it's your due season. For the do of heaven. Hallelujah. The mount of heaven, the do, the oil is on you to deal. <laughs> Because you oh, can't deal without the do. You can't deal with the do without the do. 
Mm. Mm. My God. My God. My God. Oh, oh God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank, thank you, Father. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Woo. Oh, Lord. Woo. I thank you for this mighty, powerful woman of God Almighty. I thank you so much for the vessel that you have here on this earth at such a time as this. I thank you, Lord, that even even through the most terrible times of her life, she still has her eyes fixed on you. I thank you that you have poured out a spirit of grace upon her, Lord, that she would take what is what is hurt and what was precious and hurt her so much, but yet has allowed her to drive even further and deeper into you. I thank you, Heavenly Father, that she has the spirit to release these things and bless a multitude of people, Lord. I thank you, Heavenly Father, that you have placed a voice in her that is that is prominent, that is powerful, that is resonating, that is imparting, that is that is stirs up the spirit, Lord, and incites incites from within, Lord, and stimulates those to go further and do more, Lord. I thank you, Heavenly Father, that you have blessed her. I thank you for the anointing that's on her life, the spirit that's in her life, and everything that surrounds her, Lord. Let her prosper even yet the more, Lord. Let it be stronger. Let all of her life come to a summation, Lord. Keeps growing higher and higher and stronger and stronger, Lord, that the anointing flows as the oil that she spoke of earlier, Lord, that there was a continual flow. It never ceased ceases to end. It continuously flows upon her, that the belly, the rivers of living water just continuously flow from within her belly, Lord, speaking truth, speaking revelation, speaking impartation, speaking prophecy, Lord. And you even heard, Lord, that I heard the apostolic rise up in her as changing, not only in the individual, but in the, in the church, in the community, and impacting the world, Lord. Allow more revelation to come forth to her concerning these areas, Lord, where it was it's more than just an undergirding. It's an impartation of a connection with a multi-level anointing in her life. In the mighty, powerful name of Jesus, I declare and decree that she shall go forth into the, uh, fulfilling her mandate and promisely going around this globe, Lord, preaching the word of God unrestricted, unhindered, in the mighty, powerful name of Jesus, that she was fully equipped and prepared that anywhere she goes, the dimensions will change before before she gets this, for your scripture says that her that your favor would precede her, but your glory would be her real God, which means that the work that she does in between what preceded, with your favor which preceded her and the glory which is the real God, a work would be done which glorifies you. Father, I thank you that you have allowed her hands, anything she puts her hands to, whether it's ministry, whether it's business, whether she has the authority, has the implication to lay hands on on people, everything will change and everything will prosper in the mighty, powerful name of Jesus. Those who have come up against her will have to bend their knee and submit themselves to her in repentance in the mighty, powerful name of Jesus. Those who doubt it will now come to a light and be, and their mouth would have to reveal what it is to her, what they doubted, because there has to be a reparation in the spirit realm. There has to be a reparation, even here on this earth, where things are brought into a level of consistency on the spiritual format. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for such a thing as this. And we give you the praise and the glory and the honor, Lord, in Jesus' name, continually covering this mighty, powerful woman of God. We give you all the praise and the glory. Hallelujah and amen. 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 Thank you, uh, Prophetess Williams, for everything that you have given us. Uh, I doubt if this is the last time we'll do something of this, but thank you so much for these two sessions. Uh, I, and th th this has been so impacting and so promising and so fulfilling, and it, 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 this is the kind of food that we all need desperately. We need to understand. You articulated what the authority is, and it's given us a good footing. It is no excuse for those who've heard these recordings to not be able to understand and walk out on authority as a believer. Thank you so much for all that you poured out to us, woman of God. You're welcome, Apostle. Thank you again for having me. My pleasure. And brothers and sisters in Christ, thank you for listening once again to Life 3.0. I am your host, Apostle 
J.E. Bowser. You have listened to a prophet, uh, prophetess Christy Williams. And please, please, please listen to our next re- broadcast. It will be very soon. We will continue to give you the very best that the Lord has given us to give to you. In Jesus' name, prosper.